Hello. So I'm moored up at Swarkston on the Trenton Mersey, just south of uh, the city of Derby. Um, I decided to pay Canal and River Trust to have some winter moorings here. Um, I've paid for November, December and January because that will allow me to stay put for all three months and get on with inside the boat. Um, normally you would have to move on after 14 days um, but this has allowed me to, to stay. So today I'm off to get some wood and I've ordered a load of sockets and back boxes and things for the electrics because I am progressing inside. It's been quite slow because I've been really busy with work but um, I'm getting there. Today's job is to buy more battens. I purchased 22 by 38 millimeter or two by one inch treated timber. As they'll be behind the boat's panelling, there's no need for them to be nice and smooth and rough sawn is cheaper anyway. So inside the boat, I had a couple of issues with my walling below the gunnel. The gunnel is the bit of the boat that you walk on on the outside and there's always a lip and the inside will then be angled outwards and then the, the top bit will be angled inwards. So it's a bit like that. Um, I had battened it and I, need, I wanted some tongue and groove. I wanted a groove going upwards because then when you look down the boat that all the lines aren't going horizontally and it will make the boat feel wider. I originally bought some wooden pine tongue and groove. I fitted it on, I probably did about that much. And every time I went past it, especially with Molly bashing and crashing down steps and into the boat, it flexed and it moved. And I thought, well, if it's flexing and moving at this stage, what on earth will it be like in a couple of years time? So I wasn't very happy with that. So I removed that and then went back to the drawing board. I was going to buy sheets of MDF that had already got the, the groove in. Um, I had found a good supply for that, but the slats were that way and I didn't want the slats that way. And then um, a viewer called Andy on his boat, uh, Lillian Rose, he stopped me and said, Jono, go and have a look inside the boat. I think I know what the answer is. And I was like, right, okay. So I went down inside his boat and could see what he had used below the gunnels. And it was laminate flooring. Very, very tough, very strong. He had put the grooves upwards like this. So I walked into his boat and I could see exactly what it would look like. And I thought, right, that's the decision. Um, laminate flooring, if you get it in deals, um, certain warehouses, there's a, um, a, a chain called B&Q here in the UK that do offers. And this laminate flooring um, is waterproof, it's splash proof, it's got a special seal in the join, it's covered on the back side as well. And it was reduced from I think £39.99 a square metre down to £7.99, which is rather a good offer. So I knew how many, how long the boat was, so I bought a shed load of it. I filled the car and came back. Before I could fit the laminate, I needed to cut away excess foam and it caused an awful mess. I filled any gaps the original foam had left with fresh spray foam and as a sort of belt and braces approach I also added a foam sheet behind the panels. So I've cut the tops of all of them and I have screwed them at the bottom and then I've secret nailed upwards because I didn't want to see lots and lots of screw marks all down the side. Um, and then the top bit here will have the cable tray and then the wall above but it's so far very strong really tough um, I although this color is really nice it's a nice gray color I probably will um, paint it I like the groove and I like the fact that it's it's got a slight wood effect as well so um, I'm really pleased with this and I've done virtually the whole side of the port side of the boat um, and then I'll have to move all my wood and everything over to the port side so I can do the starboard. Before I'd moved Alice to the final winter mooring spot, it looked like it was snowing outside. Nope, it was just ash from a series of huge fires on the other side of the canal. The farmer, who was also a journey with John O'Viewer, 
was burning off the field's remains of hay. It wasn't suitable for livestock, and this type of hay is the only sort that can be burnt. Luckily, the fire brigade had been notified, as it looked quite a sight. Originally, I laid all the pipes behind the wall. There were battens, and I screwed them to the top and the underside of the battens. Now, that was fine, and that would keep them out of the way, and it would look nice and clean. However, I had a leak on one of my um, connectors onto the radiator itself, in the main um, sort of living area, and I sat there thinking, right, if... And I could see it because there was no wall. And I sat there thinking, right, OK, if the wall was there, I wouldn't have seen that leak and the water would have gone down the wall and underneath the floor. And the next thing I would have known, the heating wouldn't have gone on because there's no water in the system. And I thought, right, OK, I don't want that. So I've taken the pipework off the battens here and put them on the floor instead. This is a more traditional way of doing it. I would say probably 90% of all narrowboats have their pipework on the floor because of the fact that you need to be able to regularly access it, inspect it, check for leaks. Because it's not like a house, the leak would come out onto the floor. On a boat, it would go down below the floor and fill up your bilge. Didn't want that. So I've got three connectors. They all connect together. They um, snap together, which is quite nice. And then they've also got a, a snap on the top. And I've screwed them all down and spaced them accordingly. And all my pipe work throughout the whole boat, both sides, will be on the floor. And then I will put another batten on the outer side. And then probably some angle joins on the edge. And I will probably use some off cuts of this to make it go out and down. Um, I'll have to line the the lines up because my OCD will kick in otherwise if they're all skew if all the lines going out are, are not exactly lined up I'll lie in bed or sit at the settee and I'll be annoyed about that so that's another time but I'll make that nice sort of trunk and then I can take it all off and have a look at the joins when I want to. At the end of the pipes I added drain valves just in case I needed to empty the system at a future date. Next time I'll go over how I'm tackling above the gunnel, my new water tank and what type of sockets and back boxes I've decided upon. Until then, see you later. <laughs>